The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Just reminding traders if they're new to this channel or if this is the first time you've seen this video, if you go to this playlist, everything you need is in this playlist as it is titled. We go over the templates, the timings, the levels, the behavior of price. This will help to bulletproof your understanding of the best trade setups in the playbook. Again, these are free videos on the YouTube channel to support and enhance the skills and the development of your trading prowess within the playbook itself. Everything you need is in this playlist. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, continuing our discussion on other time frame traders and understanding the importance of when levels are broken, whether it's on the day itself for identifying a best trade candidate or if it's an existing longer time frame trade, how those trades will present and how we can identify the best candidates on the day for the session that we're trading for a potential best trade parabolic setup. Now, as I mentioned last day, typically the high of day, low of day will be established at some point on the previous day from a peak formation low reversal or peak formation high reversal, which establishes the high of day and low of day heading into our new day. So remember, I tell everybody this, that these three levels are the basis of identifying the best candidates on the day and also the levels that I trade from. So this is what, what I do, what I look for to identify my trade levels for entry and potential targets on. But if we're inside of a day that's potentially in a, in a longer time frame trade, for example, we could be in a day two or even a day three blow off, we will look at ways to identify the best candidates uh, for those opportunities, but also to eliminate out pairs that may be poor quality setups because we do not have evidence of other time frame traders coming in on one of the sides of the market, even though it may have broken a boundary. So we talk about markets that are in breakout. Traders are trying to buy or sell a reversal where there is no other evidence of other time frames coming in driving that reversal. And we'll look at some specific examples of that also. Typically, uh, best trade candidate setups will uh, involve other time frame traders. So we'll look at two types. We'll look at the ones that uh, form on the day that involve other time frame traders, and we will look at ones that do not touch the day, uh, those HOD, LOD boundary levels on the day, but they're an existing trade in line with a longer time frame and how to identify those for the continuation trades. And again, reminding people I'm using the one hour charts, the one hour charts, because at a minimum that's being driven by one hour time frame traders. And I'm looking to align myself in line with a longer term thesis for best trade candidates. So coming back to understanding that uh, there are three day setups, Okay, that can involve any three days where we have a failed breakout at the higher low of the week. And that is confirmed when we have a second day that breaks a daily level on the opposite side. We'll look at an example of that today as well. We can have three session setups, which may not have broken high of day, low of day levels, but may be in line with a longer time frame trade setup. Again, the importance of understanding the opening range. Monday is the opening range for a new week. Then we have trigger days, signal days, day three breakout traders in the markets. First red day, first green day, and inside day opportunities. One important aspect that we'll look at today as well is another way to identify potential setups, whether it's for Asia, London, um, is observed at the close of the markets and in some cases how the market closes so when we come to the u.s session we have 
obviously, Asia and London, as well as our daily levels, to give us enough information to identify a candidate. But we can also identify candidates in Asia and London by how a market closes on these longer time frames and the close itself. We're looking at the Japanese yen, and the first thing I want to look at is just differentiate a couple of examples on how the markets close. Uh, we have an example on Tuesday, the previous week, where we have a peak formation high made in our U.S. session. Now we have a peak formation high that closes out of balance uh, from the opening range, but more importantly, we have three hours to the high once it breaks out. So we have a, a breakout of a daily level, other time frame traders, but they're going after the pin high. But that move is one hour, two hour, three hours. So we have other time frame traders in the market that are buying this move up. We then have a reversal that starts a one, two, three hours down before consolidating into the close and then four hours that are downward candles. The two consolidating smaller candles are all inside of this reversal candle. So again, if we look at this pin high, this, this reversal is driven by other time frame traders. Once they got up to this level, selling initiated at the extreme, selling initiated at the extreme. Now, if we look at the bottom of that market buying was initiated at the extreme and it came back inside of the previous day's range why does that matter because we know we know that other time frame traders came in at the low of day level after it had gone and broken out of balance we're going to make some sense of this in a second and understanding why not to counter trend number one we have an hourly rotation taking place so uh, when this market broke out, we were in the midst of the New York session. Uh, 9.30 New York, candle breaks out, closes at the extreme, but we, we still have a new boundary established in our day two, our initial balance. The market proceeds to trade to the top of that before selling the response of the sellers is initiated and pulling back inside. Now, you'll notice as well, we have a large box. Price is always in a box. And if I can't identify the box, I need to wait until I can. So when we're inside of the day, this is an example again, where we now have a selling response initiated that continues down into the new day, continues down into the new day, continues into the new session, into the London session. We still have selling taking place. There is no evidence of a buying tail or a buying response from other time frame traders. You'll notice again our extremes have been reestablished on our day two, our initial balance, a range expansion on both sides, before coming down and going out of balance again on Wednesday, and we have a buying response initiated closing out the day. Now remember, I'm looking at this in hindsight heading into the new day, but if you're looking at a session trade opportunity, understanding why we don't want to counter trend on the inside because we have an existing move already in place and no evidence of a reversal inside of that range. We come to our new day now. We have a range expansion on the downside. We had buying response put in place when the market went out of balance and that continued into the close, meaning that other time frame buyers were behind this move back inside. We have higher highs taking place on the inside. Now this was a day that did not break any other time frame boundaries, high of, high of day, low of day. We had a market that established a low of the day in a market that was being driven by other time frame buyers, but it's obviously met the level the point of control, if you will, as Dalton calls it, perhaps where that move down was driven by other time frame sellers. And funny enough, if I put a high and a low or right around the 50% level on the inside day. Now we also have evidence of other time frame buyers, longer time frame buyers coming in during the day, putting in a low of the day level. And the same thing happened on the top of that range, but the market traded through that 
on our Friday. So they've cleared out that level, invalidating that level now as a peak formation high. And we're inside still, so we have our peak formation low, our reversal pattern down low, and we continue to make higher highs on Friday into the close. So again, evidence that this market is being driven by other time frame buyers every time the market comes down to a low of the day level. So we have buying, buying outside of the range that's continued to eat into the other time frame sellers. We just project those levels across. This is a one hour chart. But if we compare Friday's uh, close and Monday's open to the previous week, we had a peak formation high that was established uh, by other time frame sellers coming into the market to close out the market. And we don't really have that. Notice into the close, we have small evidence of selling, but then the market continued to push higher. We had other time frame buyers still in the market, but then that market reversed in the Asian window. We had other time frame sellers come into the market once we broke out of Friday's high of day level. What do I have now? potentially on day one a new timing cycle we have selling that continued down into our london window we have a peak formation high and we have a peak formation low on friday the market reverses in london and we have other time frame buyers driving that move back up into our breakout so we have peak formation high peak formation low on friday and a higher peak formation low on Monday. So we have evidence of buying now in the market and evidence of selling in the market. But this move was initiated by longer and other time frame sellers once we took out the previous high of the day. We've pushed up into an area where sellers came into the market and drove this market down. Peak formation high, peak formation low is the day zero setup, a parabolic opportunity. Page 84 in the playbook. So again, the, if you can visualize when we have peak formations in place, we now have a consolidation for a potential parabolic move. This move was initiated by other time frame sellers. So the thesis being now is that selling in that upper part was driven in that first part of the day by sellers. But this is why I mentioned to traders to sit on their hands and wait first hour of the US window potentially could go vertical for a range expansion. So we could have a market that goes parabolic or just pushes higher and breaks one boundary or the other for a range expansion opportunity on day one. Now we've already done that. We've broken the, the high of day boundary, which triggers other time frame traders into the market, or we can see a response from other time frame traders into the market. And so now the thesis being is that this market is broken down and heading into our U.S. window, we want to see evidence of now that reversal trade continuing down through the low of the day for a range expansion opportunity. A range expansion opportunity in this particular case on a day one, not a date, not a three day setup. I just take the high and low of that consolidation, project a level down, and we can see we've pinned through that before pulling back inside of the previous day's low of day. Let's take a closer look. So we have a breakout of our initial opening range that continues to auction lower for a range expansion in the London window, but that's a breakout of our upper, upper level, our upper box filled breakout. And then our new low of the day is established by the London session. First hour puts in a peak formation high Again, timing, just paying attention to the time of day. Second hour pushes back up into that level again before consolidating 30 to 45 minutes and engulfing, pulling back inside of our universal EMA and projecting our low and high of that range as a potential measured move profit target. Now, this market coiled for an extra length of time before blowing off, but again, we're on a Monday which is our opening range for a new week. No fundamental data. We have a Fed FOMC on Wednesday, two-part release, and then non-farm payrolls Friday. And so uh, when we have markets that are set up in well-engineered charts, 
the timing of this is probably designed for a reason as they build a template heading into our non-farm payrolls Friday, but also our FOMC Wednesday. Take a closer look again. So just to understand this, we broke a level. We have a longer time frame or a one hour chart. Selling was initiated above that level and continued down. We have other time frame traders driving this move. Peak formation high. Peak formation high and even on the one hour chart uh, for traders if they entered into this market in our coil either at the close of our inside bar or the opening price of our first hour traders got filled anywhere above 90 a measured move target took this opportunity in the area down towards 32 so 50 to 60 pips of profit um, on a Monday day one triggering other time frame traders into the markets letting that market set up into that first hour coiling and a continuation trade low hanging fruit page 96 in the playbook for a zero stress no heat free cash monday parabolic opportunity now the uh, u.s canadian was an interesting one and and this is a, a great uh, opportunity to learn as well we have a market that has broken down and broken outside of the range on Friday, driven obviously by longer time frame sellers. That market had buying support step in later in the session, closing out the week with buyers coming in uh, pretty much at the low of the week after pinning to the low of the week. And then selling came in again, selling pressure came in again, other time frame sellers came in on the pullback to the low of day level, closing on a selling extreme so we have a market that has uh, buying down low so evidence of other time frame buyers coming into the market down low and then other time frame sellers coming into the market into the close of the session then as i've talked about in the previous video price begins to auction back and forth around the closing price level so all the price action before I come to the US window is just setting up a box, setting up a larger box. We have the high of our opening range. We have the low of our opening range. Europe London continues to trade lower. Now we have a longer time frame buyer from Friday night that's come into the market down at that level. We have evidence of some buying coming into that level at the London Open. Uh, looking at that again, so selling came in at the breakout level of the of uh, Thursday's low of day and buying came in at the low of the week. There's our opening range and initial balance. The market broke down and reversed just before the US first hour window. We made a higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside is a setup for the dump and pump short squeeze back to the high of the day. Now, just coming back and looking at that chart again, we had buying other time frame buyers that had come into the market. Once the market was out of balance, the market has reversed and given a short squeeze setup from a buying level. We also have other time frames selling above that level, which is evidenced by the collapse later in the session today. Hence understanding when I take a trade from one level to the other, it's a nail and bail opportunity. This is not a larger time frame driven opportunity. I'm trading from a buying level into a selling level. Later in the day, obviously this market has collapsed and taken out that low of the week, low of the day level. The point I'm trying to demonstrate to traders is not saying that this is the best candidate. Uh, this offered a certain amount of uh, opportunity from the buying level. 20, 25 pips. So again, um, comparing this, if I look at other instruments, uh, there may have been a better candidate, but pointing out that we want to be able to understand how to identify the, the levels and how the market closes and sets those up. So if I'm buying this because it gave me a short squeeze opportunity, I need to understand that this market can potentially still be being driven by other time frame sellers that are still in the market above these levels. Markets pushed up there forming our opening range and broke down lower. 
So we've broken down through the opening range, again demonstrating that this other time frame seller may still be in control of this market. This market's uh, 10 minutes away from closing. There's no evidence yet of other time frame buyers putting a low in place. This level still being driven by other time frame sellers above the closing price level. And looking at the British pound, uh, we have a reversal that happened on Friday night. So again, we broke out of balance. The market reversed. Other time frame sellers came into the market at that level, closing it back below closing price. And that market continued to break down in the London session today. So again, uh, opening range and the initial balance. The initial balance pushed higher. We have our box. We've made a higher high and broken down and made a lower low so again uh, everything's in a box we hadn't broken any other time frame levels on the day when london traded but we already have a thesis that other time frame sellers are still selling this market down it breaks down heading into our us window into our new york open before we go to the smaller time frame chart i just want to point out a couple of things number one our, our selling extreme tails are up top and you'll notice that these, uh, this, the, the New York Open opens from the inside, breaking down to the low of day level and reversing into a pin hammer. This is a one hour chart. So we have evidence of other time frame buyers coming into the market. So traders sometimes uh, get caught up into this, the minutia of the smaller time frames when in reality, if you understand the rotation of time, when this hour closes, uh, the second hour, the New York hour, uh, we don't have any evidence of other time frame buyers into the market yet. So the third hour has obviously put a low in place on a smaller time frame. It's respected that level. We're on day one, it's the opening range, and we have a potential opportunity once that market goes out of balance. Let's take a look on the smaller time frame. One hour down, two hours down. This is our U.S. window right here, first hour, second hour, New York trades lower. The US session opens down in this lower part of the range on the day. So another thing to observe is, uh, you know, I mentioned to traders all the time, are they working the high or working the low? Well, we're not at the high. Uh, we haven't triggered other time frame traders. We're already in an existing downward move. But once this market breaks out, a new hour has opened down low, the third hour. This is the high of that third hour. And we have a market that's reversed back inside and we get a higher high. So the market makes a peak formation high, then a higher high. And that's the setup for the dump and pump heading into our uh, outside of our 12 candle window. Just demonstrating though that these levels, just put our universal EMA on there. Uh, this market goes parabolic later in the session as we saw also on couple of the other instruments on Monday. Understanding though this market was being driven by other time frame traders, we don't really have any, we have a small tail, a buying tail on Friday uh, before the new hour reverses and heads up. Whereas we have distinct selling tails in the London session today, taking that market into the low of day level, at which point it goes out of balance and other time frame traders may now be entering in into the market buying up that low of day which we saw and then it's gone parabolic later in the day today back up towards the high of day looking at gold we had immediately uh beginning of the day we'll zoom in here we had uh, a daily level broken right at the beginning of the new day on a gap and then that market proceeded to auction higher in the asian session so again evidence of a peak formation low we just we'll talk about this real quickly. Once uh, Thursday was the low of the week heading into Friday. And then Friday broke Thursday's high of day. That confirms Wednesday, sorry, Thursday as a day one. We broke the low of the day on Thursday. Yeah, although it's just a pin through the low, this forms our low of the week once Friday's high of day is broken. Once the high of day is broken on Monday, that confirms now we have a day one, day two, and a day three. This is a potentially a three-day setup. 
coming from the low of the week. Failed breakout. There's no volume trap down low. Somebody asked me, um, but we'll just look at this in a second. This is a two day box. So there is volume trap down low. And if we just project that level across from Friday's low of day, you'll see that there's volume trap down there as well. And we could say that this is level one. Let me redraw these boxes. Pretty simple when you start to step back and look at this. We have a level one for buying. We have a level two where price consolidates and prepares to go parabolic. Level two and then on level three we blow off in the direction of the trend. So we have a peak formation low starting our new day. The market then shows evidence of other time frame sellers coming into the picture at the end of our London session. There's our opening range and initial balance. Peak formation low, peak formation high. We have evidence of buying down low and we have evidence of selling up top in a market that has triggered other time frame traders into the market. A simple process when I come to the screen is opening range and initial balance. Uh, the opening range where Asia is on board roughly finishes right here. And then Europe opens and continues to trade higher. We're already obviously in a breakout from that first hour peak formation. And I'll just project that across, which will um, again, show three levels of rise. Now I'm going to put the universal EMA on here to understand that a parabolic level, we had uh, lots of room here. And we had, if I back this chart up, last Wednesday, the midpoint range of the week, the high projects across because we remember uh, peak formation high. And then we had day one, day two, day three already peak pushing higher. We have a target up there potentially for where is the money thought processes here as I have explained to people there's an opportunity to participate in the parabolic move outside of the range for the range expansion trade now, and once price gets to the high of day level remember we've already broken out of the previous day's high so we redraw our levels once price gets there how does it behave now remember this is a no news Monday so when you're back testing all of your charts, you need to check the days that you back test your trades on whether or not there's major red news and understanding why certain trades may be later in a session or when there's no major red news, how a market can trade so cleanly. So we have a uh, second 15 minutes into our first hour, the market goes parabolic. The, the hour ends, the hour ends and we now have one two and three pushes to the high evidence of selling coming in even though this is a five minute chart we already remember we already have evidence of selling on the left of our screen we'll back this up again to the one hour chart i had levels drawn we have selling other time frame sellers coming into the market at these levels so we, we don't need it to take out all these levels. We need to watch how does price behave when we get to those levels. We get our second hour reversal. The market begins its collapse back down. The New York market opens on the inside for a vertical collapse. We'll just back this up again through back into level one into our Asian session. We had a peak formation low in place and also if we just back this up again, levels, timings, levels, behavior of price, this market traded back to Thursday's closing price level. So we had a little bit of space. That market put the peak formation low in place. Doesn't matter whether the market continues to go lower or not. We had evidence of that market pulling back. So if we zoom in, we had an hour that ended down low. The hour ended down low and the new hour opened one hour down and the new hour begins its reversal and we have evidence on a five minute chart of other time frame buyers entering into the market at that level.
remember we were making higher highs and higher lows and we had a peak formation low established with other time frame buyers coming into the market in that Asian session. So when it gets to that level, other time frame buyers may come back into that area and start buying that up. But another example of a day zero box, peak formation low, peak formation high. Now we'll look at a market that broke out today. Um, so again, just evidence of other time frame sellers coming into the market, evidence of other time frame buyers being in the market. And then our parabolic blow off for a range expansion, a range expansion, the collapse back down into our level one, into that buying level, and the reversal began in that third hour. Well, one last thing, we'll demonstrate this while we're here. We have a day three that's potentially now in a range expansion. I take the high and low of that day, and sure enough, we've pinned right up to that level for a 100% range expansion. This market, don't know what it's gonna do, but when we had our parabolic level three blow off, it pinned up to that one full expansion of the range. Now, I was asked uh, about the EuroCAD by a few traders today, and I, I um, wanna just go through that to demonstrate the difference comparing the last few charts and understanding how a market closes and how it trades through the day to identify what time frame in terms of uh, sellers or buyers is driving the market. So we have our reversal on Thursday at the high of the week and just notice again, we have a market that is in breakout, it closed in breakout. So we have other time frame buyers now in the market, other time frame buyers in the market, no evidence of selling until the new day starts and then buyers came back into the market, putting in a peak formation low inside. The market broke outside and went out of balance and other time frame sellers came into the market above the high of day level, high of week on a Thursday. And then that market eventually collapsed in the US window, parabolic move, again, a day zero setup. And that market then went out of balance on Friday before other time frame buyers came into the market to buy that up. And then at the end of the session, the end of the day, the end of the week, other time frame sellers have closed out the day. So not just a one hour bar, we have three one hour bars down. That is other time frame sellers driving this move. And again, if we project this across, we have other time frame sellers above these levels heading into the close of the week. So the question then becomes on day three is who is driving this market heading into the new day? Uh, my thesis is that other time frame sellers are driving this move. Once it goes out of balance, anything can happen. But if I'm looking for a best trade candidate, as we demonstrated on the other pairs, and as I just demonstrated on Friday, we would wanna see evidence of other time frame buyers coming into the market the same as we would if we were going to sell a market, we wanna see other time frame sellers if we're looking for a reversal. Now it's Monday day one. This market is in a day one breakout. This is a breakout candle. A day one breakout on a, on a three day setup, we could be on a range expansion. Now, as I mentioned to uh, a couple traders, um, there is no evidence of other time frame buyers coming into this market yet. This market continues to make a creeping motion in a weakened direction. So if we're gonna look for a reversal opportunity, we either wanna or have already had other time frame buyers enter into the market, or as we saw British pound, evidence of other time frame buyers coming into the market, which reinforces when I say just because a market has broken out does not mean that it is going to reverse. It's a day one runner, which means in this type of conditions, no evidence of other time frame buyers, doesn't mean I wanna sell it down here either. This is not a best trade candidate. Uh, so we leave this alone. Not a good, just a big red X through this chart. Uh, now, if it had behaved differently and set up differently, then we would watch to see if the market either retested for a range expansion or a failed, a failed reversal or short squeeze, whatever that may be. And I'm sure at some point this market will form an opportunity as we have volume now selling down lower. 
watch and wait. Same thing on the Euro Oz. We have a, a market in breakout. So again, a market that started its move down on Thursday. Other time frame sellers coming in at the high of the day. The market did not break out on Friday of other time frame boundaries. And we see it push up above selling lower level uh, shorts, but it does not break any other boundaries. And heading into Asia, we pull back inside of that range, which again reaffirms to me that other time frame sellers are driving this move. One hour, two hour, three hours down consolidation, another one, two hours down heading into our Asia session window for the collapse and a breakout candle. No evidence of other time frame buyers until we get into our later into our London window. Okay. Timings, levels, behavior of price. The US window opens and we still have no evidence of a reversal pattern. This market could still be in a range expansion mode. Uh, West Texas oil, so spot crude, they're all the same. The market uh, broke out on a gap beginning of the new day. As Al Brooks would call this a bull candle up. That's a gap that, again, we run into other time frame sellers. One hour chart, we have other time frame sellers that have come into the market up top. For consolidating and breaking down again in the London window, other time frame sellers still driving this move, pointing out once more peak formation high heading into our US window, other time frame sellers in this market, but we also get other time frame buyers coming in later in our London session. Now remember we have other time frame buyers that have driven this move up on Friday from the low of the day. And we've had a market that's been making higher highs and higher lows and putting peak formation lows in uh, along the way. So we have a market that has pumped up at the breakout level. So a breakout pullback and then the market pumps up. So we have peak formation high, peak formation low heading into our US window. Again, a day zero setup heading into our first hour of the US 12 candle window. And that market pumped up into our US session before breaking down and going, breaking out of our opening range initial balance and going parabolic and blowing off. And you'll notice going back, where is the money? Who's who's in the money from Friday? Our one hour other time frame traders, pin hammer. And that market collapsed vertically, one hour, two hours, three hours into the low, uh, collapsing on the New York Open, straight down to that level. But understanding what what direction was being driven, other time frame sellers in the market driving this move. We had a pullback into that high of date level and closing price before rolling over, peak formation high, peak formation low, day zero parabolic collapse. We want to see evidence of other time frame buyers and sellers in the market to form our thesis. So just looking all over the place, you can see a lot of times traders are trading from the inside out and they're caught in the first move. Then there's other traders taking the counter trend move, the reversal, and we may still be in a market that's going parabolic. So. Focus on understanding how these levels are built within the day itself, whether or not we have other time frame traders driving these moves from the first day, from the second day, or from the third day, and be able to identify it on a longer time frame. Look at the Dow Jones. On Friday, we had a market that went parabolic in the US window, other time frame buyers driving this move. And then at the close of the session, at the high day level, other time frame sellers have come in and closed this market out. Small gap on the open that was filled back into closing price from Thursday. So remember, I'm looking at three levels on the chart to form my thesis heading into a session. So we now push higher. We're, we're making higher highs as we head into our US 12 candle window. Other time frame sellers above this level and we have our box. We have the breakout high of day level. It's traded down into closing price and consolidated. Now, I'm going to be doing a video <clears throat> explaining more about the indexes. 
and understanding uh, range expansions and when to avoid certain charts. So markets like this, again, you'll notice we, we're inside, but we do have a thesis that we still have other time frame traders driving this move, higher highs on a parabolic move in a market that has traded down and buying other time frame buyers have come back into the market in our opening range initial balance consolidation and a parabolic setup heading into the open of the 12 candle window. Now, as we see, this market has broken out on first hour and made a range expansion. Although it doesn't uh, appear to me much, this market gave 50 pips right at the open in the parabolic entry. But more importantly, first hour made a high. First hour made a high and the pump began down low inside of that level, our high of day level, and, and an evidence of smaller opportunity for the second hour short trade after one push, two push, three pushes. That initial explosive move is a range expansion before they begin the dump back down into that level. An example of one hour, two hour, three hours down and then the reversal for the parabolic explosive long trade begins. Timings levels behavior of price. That first three hour window of the New York session builds up the order flow. And as I talk about Fugazi, uh, we haven't broken any other time frame traders into the market, but we have a longer term thesis that this is being driven by other time frame traders. Thursday forms our low of the week. Fridays are day two, higher highs, a consolidated coiled market inside for an explosive parabolic move on a three-day setup inside, but driven by other time frame traders. So hopefully that provides some insight into understanding the importance of other time frame traders driving these moves and, and then filtering out poor quality setups or targeting the ones that stand out that you can identify a day zero setup on peak formation low peak formation high which time frame uh, I use the hourly chart but which side of the market is driving these moves what is the thesis for the trade how should it set up how should it play out once you're in that trade these markets should not be hanging around they should be zero stress very little heat and if it's a nail and bail taking the money and locking it in. As we can see uh, on Monday, this market took uh, a long time to coil sideways, but it's day one Monday. We didn't trigger any other boundaries, but we had other time frame traders driving this move. Enjoy your day, traders. Keep it simple. We'll keep continuing uh, to provide more understanding on this in the next video. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.